Today we're going to cover a few RBTI questions and the answers. It's a very important disclaimer. This question and answer session is, in, is strictly intended to help the reader understand the theory behind the RBTI. Please consult with your licensed health professional, your doctor, to determine a proper course of action for any diseases or diagnosed conditions that you may have. What is the nature of the test? Well, the simple answer, it is an analysis of a freshly voided specimen of urine and a small amount of saliva. The screening may be run for or by you at any time during the day, but the first urine voided in the morning after a night's rest should not be used. It becomes too concentrated during the sleeping hours. After the initial test, retests should be made at the same approximate time of the day to avoid highs and lows of the biological cycle. Saliva samples should not be given while chewing gum, using tobacco, or while eating candy, lozenges, or whatever. What factors will be analyzed? There are seven factors taken into consideration with the test. Each is looked at separately each is looked at relative to the others and the overall pattern produced by the factors is assessed. They are the combined urine sugars or bricks, the urine pH, the saliva pH, the combined salts, the cellular debris, the nitrate nitrogen, and the ammoniacal nitrogen. What does the formula look like and which figures are where? Okay, first is bricks, then you have the urine pH, and directly below that the saliva pH, then you have the salts, then you have the cellular debris, then you have the nitrate nitrogen, and directly below that is the ammoniacal nitrogen. What would perfect numbers look like? Well, the perfect equation, as Dr. Reams published it, 1.5 bricks, 6.4 urine pH, 6.4 saliva pH, a salts value between 6 and 7 C or 6 and 7 C conductivity units and at 0.04 M or 0.04 million particles of cellular debris then you have three parts of nitrate nitrogen over three parts of ammoniacal nitrogen. Then if my numbers were 1.5 bricks, 6.4 urine over 6.4 saliva, 7C, 4M, and 3 nitrate over 3 ammoniacal, I'd be very close to perfect health since only the fifth number in the formula is other than perfect. Am I right? No. This is simplistic thinking. Each number relates to the others in an integrated pattern or relationship focus on that fifth number. Normal is 0.04 M or 40,000 debris particles per liter of urine. On the other hand, 4 M means 4 million particles per liter. Your body could hardly be near perfect health if it were throwing out 100 times the amount of cellular debris it should normally. Anyone who wishes to un understand the RBTI needs to realize that you cannot concentrate on just a single number from within the formula. The relationship between each of them and the overall pattern produced by all the factors together must be assessed. Before going any further you must understand that age, sex, and religion are also required to evaluate any RBTI case. So your numbers are meaningless unless the age, sex, and religion are known. Dr. Reams initially instructed that race was a requirement simply because darker skin absorbs more sunlight and lessens the need for supplemental vitamin D, but race has gradually lost its place because of the need for political correctness. Can you tell me more about the first number in the formula? Well, this is the combined sugar. It is not just a glucose or galactose, which is another word for glucose, reading, or etc. 
but it's the combined total sugars or carbohydrate is read with a refractometer. This combined total tells the examiner your true urine sugar state and not just a partial picture. There are advanced procedures to identify true diabetics from a simple tendency towards diabetes, but they are beyond the scope of this simple Q&A or question and answer. Because of the danger that drug controlled or insulin dependent diabetic might flush out too much stored insulin on any program, only the licensed health professional who is also skilled in RBTI should work with diabetic clients. The first number confuses me. In the perfect equation 1.5 is optimum. My sugar is above 1.5 yet I'm told I have a tendency towards low blood sugar. Why is this? The simple answer, the 1.5 is only optimum when all the other numbers are in line. If all the other numbers were in line, then 1.5 would be the optimum spillover into the urine of sugar from a body that was utilizing its energy to its greatest effect. When the numbers drift away from perfect, it shows, among other things, that the body is not processing and utilizing food energy optimally, and even though the sugar reading may be higher than perfect, the body still responds as if it were affected by low blood sugar because the body simply cannot use effectively what it has available. Why not use the blood sugar level? The answer is because the blood sugar may elevate or depress many times in a single hour or day. The urine sugars tend to be an average of the variations in the blood sugar when taken over a 24 hour period. For our purposes, this is a more accurate picture. Dr. Reams owned and operated a medical laboratory for many years and ultimately concluded that urine analysis gave superior averaging information when compared against blood analysis. Are you saying then that the glucose tolerance test may not be all that accurate as an indicator? Yes, that is our point. What about the second number? Okay, this is the urine pH on a scale of 0 to 14. Of all the numbers in the formula, the pH values are the most challenging to understand. Look at the sequence below. We're moving from 5.4 pH to 6.4 pH to 7.4 pH. It would appear that 5.4 is a single digit below 6.4, which is the perfect RBTI value, and that 7.4 is merely one point above. What is not normally understood, however, is that pH is calculated in a base 10 logarithmic progression much like the Richter scale for earthquakes where a 7 earthquake is 10 times more damaging than a 6. Similarly, a pH drop or rise of one point means a 10 times drop or rise from the initial case. It should be easy to understand that 5.4 is 10 times more acid than 6.4, 100 times more acid than 7.4, and 1,000 times more acid than 8.4. This progression also holds true when measuring to the alkaline end of the pH scale. When viewed with this distinction in mind, it is easy to see why the RBTI consultant becomes concerned should a client's pH values move more than a few tenths of a pH point. I've read where some people consider normal urine pH to be 7.0 and others say it should be 5.6. Why this vast difference? Answer: The most frequent way to find a norm or average is to test a large grouping of people and then average out the extremes in range. The fallacy here is that these test subjects are not selected for their perfect health. The researchers feel that if enough people are tested, the differences in health of the test subjects will average out. Unfortunately, however, the vast majority of the people in the United States have drifted away from health, especially since World War II. This drift has been in the direction of thinking that sickness 
is progressive with age and that the solution is to treat illness symptoms with ever more complex and expensive drugs. There is small chance of arriving at a perfect number by taking the average of several hundred or even several thousand unhealthy people. On the other hand, the RBTI perfect value of 6.4 relates back to a half century of soil science and animal studies. It represents the apex of a bell curve that declines to sickness on each end. Why is the saliva pH important? Answer: There are several reasons. First, it gives an indication of the bile strength and liver physiology. Second, it is possible to get an indication as to which directions the numbers are going. In other words, from better to worse or worse to better. Third, it forms one of the factors of the formula and is therefore necessary in the development of the overall pattern of your numbers. What does this fourth test variable imply? Answer. This is the combined tissue salts being thrown off by the body through the urine. This number, like all the rest, is not quite as simple as it seems. For instance, a high salt reading combined with high urea readings would indicate a high level of tissue salt retention, whereas a high salt reading when the combined sugars and pHs are drifting towards normal would indicate that the body is throwing off these excess tissue salts. Remember, you can't look at individual numbers, but rather the overall pattern produced by the numbers. In the overall pattern, the combined salt number correlates with cardiac integrity, arterial elasticity, venous integri integrity or strength of the vessels, ionization factors, and cholesterol buildup just to name a few. What does this 0.04 M mean? Answer. This refers to the number of particles or cellular debris in the urine. It is not a bacterial count. A person with perfect numbers would be throwing off very little cellular debris as their digestion, cellular renewal, metabolism, and energy utilization would be optimum. When that cell debris number begins to go up, your body is breaking down faster than it is building up. In other words, you are becoming energy deficient and are losing your energy reserve. The further this loss, the further from health you're slipping and the more your body shows its age. Again, the number is not as simple as it seems. For instance, look at the numbers below. We have 0.6 bricks. 6.4 pH urine over 6.3 pH of the saliva, a 2C, a 0.04 M, and 1 nitrate over 2 ammoniacal. In this pattern, the 0.04 M is abnormal because of its relationship to the other numbers. If 0.04 M were to rise, to 4 m while at the same time the sugar, salts, and urea rose, it would be a good sign the body was getting the message. Remember, it is the overall pattern that counts. What does the 6 number mean? Answer: This refers to the nitrate nitrogen. It is an indication of how well the body is digesting and utilizing protein. What factors are involved here? Well, protein digestion relies on proper pancreatic function, which relies on proper liver function. If liver function is weak, too many proteins are broken down incompletely, causing a buildup of unwanted amino acids. These accumulate in the blood and tissues and interfere with proper tissue metabolism and oxygenation. This especially affects the heart muscle as proper building blocks and oxygen are vital to its continuing a normal cardiac output. Again, this number, especially if it's combined with high combined salt number and high ammoniacal nitrogen number, indicates 
undue cardiac stress. On the other hand, a low nitrate nitrogen number that rises in accordance with shifts in other numbers may be a very good sign as it indicates the body is throwing off these unwanted amino acids. What does the very last number, ammoniacal nitrogen, represent? Answer. When protein digestion is slow or not completely normal, excess protein remains in the bowels. In the large bowel, these improperly digested proteins ferment and putrefy or rot, thereby producing toxins. These toxins are absorbed and enter the blood and lymph systems. They change the relative acidity of the body tissues, interfere with proper metabolism and tissue oxygenation. The ammoniacal nitrogen number, as you can see, also affects the cardiovascular integrity. Why do you add the nitrate number in the ammoniacal nitrogen numbers? Answer. First, let me remind you that each number is important relative to the overall pattern. However, they are also important when combined. As said before, the heart begins to show stress at a combined number of 12. At 20, the coronary arteries are under so much stress they narrow and begin limiting the blood flow to the heart muscle. At 24 combined nitrogen, the heart muscle is not being oxygenated properly and the chance of a cardiospasm exists. At 28, you're working on thin ice. At 30, urea, which is another way of saying combined nitrogen, or above, the heart goes into spasm and ceases to beat. You become a statistic.